You know, whenever I'm out on a long training run or an ultra event, there's three things that keep me going. My music, my thoughts, and my sword endurance strength. That's right. Sword endurance strength has everything your body needs to keep it going all day long. So head on over to drinksword.com and enter code HEARTLANDRUNNER at checkout for 20% off your purchase. All right, everybody, on to the show. Welcome to the Heartland Running Podcast. Join Stephen and Andy as they explore the running community in the Ozarks and beyond. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Heartland Running Podcast. We are your hosts that can't think of a snappy way to start, so we're just going to get right after it, and hopefully that's going to go in a little bit with one of our topics that we're going to talk about later. How are you doing this evening, Stephen? It's going to be one of those shows, Brother Andy. <laughs> Let's just do it. This, this is going to be like one of those long runs that we're just going to have to gut out and get done. That's very... But we're going to have a good time doing it, though. All right. Well, before we go, should we read an iTunes review? Let's do it. All right. You want me to read it? Go for it. All right. I'm going to grab my old-fashioned paper. Exceptional show that has taught me that no matter how insignificant my times or distance may be to anyone else, it doesn't matter if I'm doing my best. Awesome guests that have led me to some other great podcasts, and I look forward to watching their reviews. Well, thank you very much, Sports Dad 84 Do you think that thank means you. he was born in 84? Wow. Wow. Man, I was already listening to Metallica at that age. <laughs> Which I did have to watch a Metallica video before we got on here. I don't know why. I just uh, had that calling. Okay. What did you watch? I watched, um, it was Metallica uh, Seattle 1989, which was supposed to be the best concert ever put on ever. And it was pretty good. Okay. Well, good. You have to look at that one up. That is running related, I believe. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do a little catch up. What's been going on, brother Andy? Oh, not too much. Uh Ran a race a couple of weeks ago and uh, getting ready for my half. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I am two weeks out from the race that a friend of mine and I direct. We co-direct it and it's getting stressful. And to everyone out there who you know likes to run races, which I'm sure is most people, uh, sign up early so that way you don't give the directors heart attacks on their numbers. Just, just, just sign up, just commit. So that way we're not sitting around going, is anyone going to show up to this race? Well, it's your show too, Andy. So plug away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this is the, uh, rally 66 Ranger run and 5k. This is the third time we've done this event. Uh, we also are incorporating a car show in with the event, uh, lots of classic cars and we we're going to have live music. Uh, we're going to have a barbecue and just feed the public. Whoever wants to come, uh, they they get to eat for free. And we're going to have inflatables for the kids. And this is going to be on April 30th. It is a Sunday. And so it's one of those rare Sunday races that's not a marathon. And we do that because it's at our church and we're doing it in conjunction with uh, one of our services. And uh, it's a good time. Wait, wait a second. The inflatables are only for the kids? Oh, I, I get on them every year. Okay, yeah. so so it is yeah. good. Adults can get on the inflatables. Oh yeah, yeah. All yeah, right, big Oof. kids are definitely welcome. I was going to say, I'm not. I wouldn't go if I can't get on the inflatables. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> if you are in the uh, southwest corner of Missouri or passing through, and you are interested in getting a little bit of information about the race, you can go to www.rally66.com. That is R A L L Y E six six dot com. So uh, we, we spell it the old fashioned way. And there will be links in the show notes. Excellent. Thank you. That. They'll, they'll even be the fancy clickable type links. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so what you got coming up for running? Any big races? Uh, okay. Well, I, I've got the, uh, we'll just jump right into it. Uh, I've got the uh, Joplin Memorial Half that's coming up. That's my next big one. And that's going to be towards the end of May. That's kind of our big hometown race. Uh, it's a 5k half marathon marathon, and I, I'm going to be doing the half marathon. If you listen to a couple episodes ago where we had Denny Cray come on and he was talking about his new book that he had written, uh, be ready for race day. Uh, he was kind enough to give us an advanced copy of that book. Oh, he was kind enough to give you an advanced me. copy. See, I guess, I guess I'm I, not that good a friend. I did not get an advanced copy. Right, well, you know, we, I, I me and Denny were, we're tight. I see how it is. Yep. We're tight. Talking so, to you, Denny. <laughs> so anyway, 
uh, we kind of had a little deal worked out that I was going to get an early copy of the book and uh, I was going to incorporate his training plan or the the book teaches you how to put together a quality training plan. And uh, I, I told him, well, I'm going to incorporate that and I'm going to attempt to PR at the half marathon. And so I've given myself a pretty lofty goal. Um, and, and so we'll see what happens. I've had a few setbacks the last couple of weeks, but I'm, I'm still doing pretty good. And so, I, you know, I might have to make a little bit of an adjustment on uh, on my pace, but I can still PR uh, that way. So anyway, looking forward to it, training hard and uh, hoping to have a good day. So so I think I know one of your setbacks. I was going <laughs> to wait till a little later to talk about this when we were doing an update. But uh, one of your little what one of your little pities didn't go to market, did it? That, that that is correct. Uh, I there was a farmer that needed help unloading his uh, his hog out of the trailer. Now this is the Heartland Running podcast. We live in the Heartland, and so there's going to be animals that enter our life, and uh, and sometimes we get close contact with them. And so anyway, I'm inside the trailer with the hog. The hog was very upset that I was in the trailer with it, and we decided to wrestle. Now, I want you to know that I eventually did win. The pig did exit the trailer, but not without stomping my foot and breaking one of my one of my little toes. And so anyway, (laughs) it it, it was the next week of runs was just pretty miserable. So I had to back off on on my speed work. I backed off a little bit on my long runs. And so I had a week that I didn't really feel like was very productive there. And uh, so anyway, that's one of the reasons why. I, I'm, I'm thinking about adjusting uh, adjusting my time, and then also the this last week uh, I've, I had to go to the uh, uh, a sports position and get a little get a little flexibility work and do some physical therapy because I, I I've, I'm not a very flexible person and I think that most runners tend to be very non flexible except for those that do yoga like Stephen here uh, I do not and I do not do things like that like I should so. Anyway, I found myself to where I didn't think that I was flexible enough, uh, and it was causing me a, a, a little bit of irritation, a little bit of pain in the neck region and back region, and so uh, I'm having someone work with me on getting me uh, get me stretched back out and get me uh, get me where I need to be. So, so this week has been just a little bit off, but you know, I, I feel like I'm coming back a little bit strong, stronger than before, and I think that I get some of these things corrected, and uh, it's it's going to help help improve, improve my running. Well, one, start yoga. And, yes. And two, I just wanted to comment after your hog story, you <laughs> realize that half of our audience went, man, I hate when that happens. And the other half went, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these jokers? <laughs> well, for myself, I have a couple races coming up. I have the uh, Frisco 50 mile, which we'll try to think what today is. We'll actually be probably doing the week this episode comes out and then after that my next race is in june and i'm doing ruts the run under the stars that is a steve durbin race it is 10 fun filled exciting hours of going around a half mile oval horse track there will be at least two other heartlanders heartland listeners heartlanders running it with me so if this is something you would like to do, I would encourage everyone to go sign up for this race. It's in Paducah, Kentucky, June 10th and 11th. Come on out, say hi. Uh, not really going to race this, just going to run around in a circle and have fun. Uh, <laughs> you get to camp and uh, right in the center of the track. So you can kind of self-aid station. They have aid stations, but you can self-aid station because you can just step right off the track to your car or your tent. Uh, I think people barbecue and all that. So I think it'll be a good time. It's not too expensive. Still plenty of spots left. And I sound like a lot of fun. There was a Heartland discount code. I will ask Mr. Durbin if that's still active. I'm not sure if it is or not, but will be a fun one to do. But I wanted to really get into a topic because I'm just honestly pulling myself out of it. And a couple other people we know, uh, friends of the show, are going through it. So I think it's going around. I think the uh, running funk demon is making the rounds. uh, Because I know I was in a bad burnout funk for probably the last two weeks for a variety of reasons. And I think we all get there once in a while. And just thought Andy and I could maybe uh, back and forth a little bit about uh, 
when that happens to us and what we do about it. I know for me, I had gotten sick in early January and I never got like, you know, I never got that where I'm in bed and I can't move sick. I mm-hmm. just didn't feel right, and yeah. I thought maybe my thyroid was off, and I got it checked, and it's fine. And I'm telling you, I did not feel right till maybe five or six days ago. Yeah, and so I'm finally coming, but I couldn't, I couldn't do my workouts as hard as I wanted when I was running. You know, I mean, I'd, Corey would have me, you know, do a, a marathon pace, which for me should be around eight thirty miles, somewhere around there, and it was all I could do to do like a nine fifteen. Yeah. You know, my chest would start hurting and, and stuff like that. So um, it was really frustrating. Um, I got to the point I didn't want to run. You know, not that just in that morning when you get up and you're like, oh, I don't want to get outside. And then 10 minutes later, you're like, oh, yeah, this is why I get up and run. You know, yeah. I, it, the whole run, I could be out for a half hour, an hour. I'm just like, I just want this to be over with and done. I don't want to run. I even don't don't tell Corey. I even took a couple unscheduled days off. <laughs> <laughs> We won't tell him that. But I was wondering, what what do you do to, I'll I'll tell you kind of what else helped pull me out here in a second, but what do you do to help lift yourself up when you get in that funk? And you're not really at a point where you can just say, okay, you know what, I'm going to take a running break. You know, you've got that goal race coming or big race coming in to say, you know what, I need a couple weeks off. I I think that there's a lot of psychological issues with that. Um, so now you're saying it, I'm crazy? It, well, yeah, no, 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 no. When it, when That's like, okay. <laughs> the, the actual experience of of being in that burnout, whenever you know that I've got this race coming out up, or I really need to keep keep getting my workouts done, but I don't feel good, or I just don't want to, and then there's that stress that comes along with that. That I, I I'm I'm hurting myself by not doing what I know what I need to do, mm-hmm. and and that, that's one of the things that that really really gets me the most. And, and I would say probably maybe two months ago, uh, I, I had myself a, uh, probably a two to three week funk. And it was really stressful to me to know that, okay, these things that I want to do and these things that I want to accomplish, I know that I'm compromising that by not getting out and doing what I need to do. And I, I just don't need that stress in my life, mainly because I, I'm not doing this for a living. I'm doing this for fun. And it's something that I enjoy and it makes me a better person and I'm not getting out there doing it. And I mean, it, it's almost like a double edged sword mm-hmm. that I'm stressing about something that's supposed to be my stress reliever. And so to get back to your original question of what I'm actually doing or what, what I do to help get myself out of that is a lot of times I'll call someone new, someone I've never run with before mm-hmm. and, and, and do that. Uh, there, there are two run groups that I, uh, um, that I'm associated with. And, um, it's, it's always neat because we've always got different activities going on at different times. And, and so I can get with some new people and have some new conversations, or I can have those same old boring conversations that I have with the people I usually run with, but they're new. And someone gets to hear that, hear that first marathon story uh, as I'm running with them. And, you know, it's not the third or fourth time that I've said it to the normal people. Um, and, and then another thing that I've done is, uh, is I've incorporated uh, some some games in with running. Uh, we've got a group of us that uh, uh, we're about the same speed, and so we average about uh, there's about four to five of us whenever we all meet together again. And so we, we try to incorporate something different into each run. Uh, we've started an Indian run, and we've been really liking that here lately, where it also gets us uh, some intervals involved in our long runs. Uh, and and if you've never heard of that or never done anything like that before. That is where, where you all run in a single file line and you have a predetermined amount of time or distance that uh, someone's going to stay at the back and someone's going to lead at the front. And then uh, after that certain distance or time, the person from the back speeds up and runs past everyone else and then gets in line in front of everyone else. And now you're leading and now you're pacing. And really, it keeps your mind engaged on something other than just running because you're responsible for the pace that was determined by everyone at the beginning uh, of that run. And so, so you're concentrating on keeping your pace. You're concentrating on being in unity with everyone because we run pretty close together. We're not, we're, we're probably four to five foot spread in between uh, us. And so, you know, you got to pay attention to what you're doing. You got to make sure that people aren't falling behind. People aren't coming up on you. And then, you know, you just continue to change places and you know, the good thing about that is, is it keeps your mind engaged. Okay, I, then, ha- I have another term for that type of running. 
What's that? It, it's called the changing of the butt. The changing of the butt. Whose butt are you going to stare at now? <laughs> I just, I've been on some trail races where it's, it's single track, you know, you can't, yeah. so you're in that conga line and finally the leader's like, okay, I'm done leading someone else. And you're like, okay, we'll stare at someone else's butt for a while. And eventually it'd be your turn for them to stare at your butt. So. Yeah. And, and, and the key thing is, is properly placing yourself at the beginning of that because, you know, you're going to stay in the same order for an hour. You need to know who sweats the least. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's the person that you get behind because, you know, if they're a big sweater, I mean, you're, yeah. you're going to get wet. So. Yep, exactly. Anyway. And then another thing during that period where I was having that, uh, that burnout, I think a lot of it was weather. Uh, you know, there's one thing about winter, whenever it's just cold, I can deal with that. But we were getting into the time of year where it was cold and rainy and mm-hmm. misty. And I was just I was just bleh. I just didn't even I just didn't want to go out in it because I was I was burnt out with winter, too, mm-hmm. because, you know, we're, we're, spring was close, but just wasn't close enough. And so I just I just I was done. I just didn't want to get out in it anymore uh, because I'm, I'm an early morning. I'm a four or five a.m. runner. And, you know, that's when it's the darkest. That's when it's the coldest. And it's just it's sometimes it's just not fun. And so what I did was. I joined a gym for three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, I signed up for three months and and I'm I'm hitting the treadmill there and I'm mixing that in with my other runs that are outside whenever, you know, I, I can the weather's nice enough where I feel happy to go out. And so once at the end of that three months, then, you know, I'll, I'll let that expire and I'll, I've got all summer long to sweat my butt off outside. Very true. I know for me. One thing, and I said I was sick, I got to the point where I actually had to go get antibiotics, uh, strep throat, started feeling better. But one of the big things I had to, I had to kind of take my training back to basics. I had to go back and, you know, like you said, that was running was supposed to be my time to get away from other things. And I realized I was getting to the point where running was consuming most of my time, running related stuff. I had my, my training, our podcast. Facebook groups, and you know, marketing the podcast, that type of stuff. And I realized it was no longer my time to get away. It was consuming a lot of my time. So I just had to step back and say, you know what? I'll devote this much time and that's it. If it doesn't get done, who cares? Yeah. And use that time to actually sleep some. Mm-hmm. You know, I was sleeping like five hours a night and then getting up and running 10 miles. You know, you, you Especially at, at our age, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you can do it for a while, and then it catches up with you. So yeah, I took like three nights where I went to bed like at seven thirty. I mean, I came home, ate dinner, walked the dog, bed, and slept till you know four o'clock when it's time to get up to run. And um, yeah, feel a thousand percent better. So yeah. that was my big advice. If you're really feeling burnt out, um, and you're not at the position in your training where you can just take a break, like after Frisco. Um, I was talking to Coach Core. I said, hey, after Frisco, I want to take a couple weeks off because then we're going to start getting into training for that 100. So I just want a couple weeks off. And he's like, you read my mind, two weeks off, no running. But not at a point I could do that. So step back. You have certain things you have to do. You have to go to work. You have to feed the kids and that type of stuff. And put running, you're running next. And everything else, if you can't get to it, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Just don't. And, and so, so you and I were in different situations where you, you have a coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't have a coach yet. That's not going to start until, um, after May and for my lead up to Chicago. But what was your communication with Corey like? Because I'm, I might find myself in that same situation to where, you know, the, that, that coach's job is to make you the best that you can be. And, and, and did he have a conversation with him or did you just get through it or, or did it, or what sort of changes were there in the plan? As far as like when I was sick? Yeah. Whenever you're going through that burnout period, uh, did you, did you tell him that? I don't think I really, I'm sure he probably kind of knew, but I didn't, don't think I, I did mention when I said, Hey, after Frisco, I want to take a couple of weeks off. I'm starting to mm-hmm. feel a little burnt out. But when I told him that. I had already been that way for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You, you know, so I didn't, cause you know, you don't, I mean, let's face it when, you know, at the end of the week, your coach will ask you, how do you feel? How are you doing? And, and you know what? You have a bad run now and then, you, you know, you, you don't want to sit there and whine like, Oh, on Tuesday, my pinky hurt. And then, you know, I, 
I cried over, you know, you just, it was fine. You know, I got through it. No, no big deal. I, you know, shrugged off the badness, but yeah, I think that, um, that's the part where I failed. I failed my coach is when, you know, you're going on a, after maybe a, if you're longer than a week, I mean, sometimes there's the bad week too, you know, you're busy at work, that kind of stuff, you know, wife's wife or husband's yelling at you, whatever. Um, but yeah, when it's going on more than that, you should tell your coach like, Hey, I don't know what's going on. And I did tell him that, you know, I just haven't been feeling right. I've been sick, but not sick enough to stay in bed. Um, it seems that everyone that's gotten whatever this is, it goes on for months. But, um, and then there would be good days though. I mean, I'd have a good day and then right back. So, uh, yeah, I'd just say just, you know, if you're, if you have a coach or just someone you bounce your training off of, let them know if it's been more than, you know, four or five days. And you're still in that funk, still not feeling right. And just let them know because they'll cut your workouts back or just tell you take some time off. Because a lot of times it's better just to take some time off. You know, I mean, everyone says it and it's, you know, on all the different podcasts and blog articles. And it's true. You know, if you take a week, week and a half off of running, as far as how it's going to affect your fitness really isn't anything. Yeah. And and it's tough because, you know, we, we live in that world of Strava where we all love Strava. We love the social aspect of it. But the problem is, you know, you, when you should be taking a rest day, you should be backing off. You see people out there hammering it, just, you know, doing great things. And then you're thinking that I, I should be doing more. I'm not doing enough. Mm-hmm. But obviously they're they're having their days off and you're just not seeing it because you're just seeing what's coming through your feed. Yeah. That's true. You know, the other thing I want to mention when you have a coach too is when, um, I originally started with Corey, you know, a good coach is going to ask you, what do you want to do? You know, and you're going to tell them. And if it's a good coach, he or she will tell you, I think you can do that or you're dreaming. Mm -hmm. But when they say, I think you can do that and that's what you want to do, they're going to start training you for that. Yeah. So if at some point you're one, no, that's no longer your priority or you just are pretty dang sure you're not going to hit that goal you need to let them know Mm -hmm. so they're either going to you know explain why you can do it or they're going to say okay if it's no longer a priority we're going to drop your training you know what i mean we're not going to do as much speed work or we're going to do more speed work if you're like you know what i don't want to do ultras this year after all i want to focus on the half marathon yeah you're you're going to change so it's important to communicate that i don't know that i do the greatest job because i am one of those i'm fine person (laughs) you know my leg can be cut off and i'm like "Eh, it's all right just a flesh wound but, yeah. <laughs> but that was the big thing I wanted to talk about tonight because I know we all go through it. I know there are some friends of the show that are going through a mega funk right now as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if, if any of the listeners, I mean, Andy and I, we are available on Facebook and everything through message. If, if you just need a shoulder to cry on for a minute, mm-hmm. people understand you can hit us up on Messenger. Don't get me too late. You can message Andy till like three or four in the morning. Well, four he's up anyways, but <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get back with you the next day. We, we would definitely be there if anybody, uh, just needs a shoulder for a minute. But, um, other than that, um, oh, the other thing, and this, this, I think we'll, we'll have to talk about this later, but I think this might be a future podcast episode. I think I'm going to buy a bike. A bike. And I don't mean a Walmart bike, but you know, a bike I can actually take off-road a little. I mean, I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars or anything, but mm-hmm. just when I can take off-road, um, I've been meaning to do it, and I, I think I'm going to finally pull the trigger on it. Well, I, I've i been wanting to do a duathlon for a long time. Not a triathlon, because I don't mm. want to get wet, <laughs> but uh, I've got some friends that uh, do a little duathlon, and boy, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it's just that expensive bike. Whew. Well, I'm... I've been talking to, I've got a, a friend here in town who, who mountain bikes and he's semi serious into it. And I'm like, you do, I'm not paying a thousand dollars. And he's like, you know, you can get a, you can get a decent used mountain bike for under 200 bucks. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I can do that. So now I got it. I don't know anything. A duathlon that's obviously running and biking. How long? Is it a marathon and a hundred mile bike ride or? Oh, uh, they've got they've got various distances. They've got the sprint and the Olympic. I we think. want the real I, one, the real one, man, the manly the, one. The, well, I, I'm you, you know they they vary, but I, I think that we're talking like a five k run, ten k bike, five k run. After that, I, yeah, I okay. think that's a common one. I don't know a lot about them. 
I just think it looks like fun and something. Oh, I just thought it'd be like a uh, triathlon minus the swimming because a triathlon is a marathon and isn't it a hundred mile bike ride? A hundred, hundred and twenty, something like that. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, that, that'd be a long day. That'd be a long day. Just pace yourself, I guess. Just pace yourself. (laughs) You get one of those electric bikes. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of pace yourself, I need to tell you about, about my last race that I had last weekend which was absolutely the worst strategy ever in the history of running a 10K. Beer and, and donuts? So, what? Beer and donuts? No, 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 no. No, this this was, uh, I, I went in with no game plan whatsoever. And this was a very small race. Oh, you took the Steve uh, strategy. Yes. All right. So, it, so it, it's so small, I actually placed second place. <laughs> and it's not a very impressive second place, let me tell you. So any, anyway, uh, I no game plan. I just wanted to go there to support the cause because it was a cause that I liked. And, and, you know, I wanted to, I hadn't raced in a while. It's nice to get out there with everyone. So anyway, take off at the starting line. And so I see someone that I know, okay, they're tapering for Boston. And so they're probably not going to be hitting it too terribly hard. I'll just kind of hang with them. Hmm. And so all of a sudden I'm two miles in, and I'm running a seven minute pace. And I'm thinking, oh my God, Gosh, I can't do this for much longer. <laughs> and then we get to three miles and they turn back to the finish line. And I thought, oh, crap, they ran the 5K. Uh. <laughs> so I went out at their 5K pace. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, I got to do this all over again. <laughs> so anyway, I, I we, we go on and it's a different route for the second 5K. And and I noticed that the guy that's that won is so far ahead of me that you know, I, I'm, I've checked him off. He doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. And I end up getting to this high point, and I turn around and look at me, and it's like, I don't even see the next person behind me, so I dial it back to like a 9.15 pace, and I just kind of, <laughs> I don't even know what my finish time was for the 10K. Never even just cruised it on in. <laughs> It was like the worst positive split in the history of <laughs> racing. <laughs> so anyway, if you if, if you ever have a race strategy that's anything like that, it's a bad one. Don't do it. <laughs> well, Andy, if you knew they were running Boston, they were fast enough to qualify for Boston. So they're easy. They were tapering. <laughs> but still, their easy pace is still going to be more than what your full race pace is probably. <laughs> I mean, if you went out with Meb, you know, he'd be like, it's easy today. We're running six minute miles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like two and a half miles. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm bonking oh, in a yeah. five day. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have your Terrible. sword with you, did you? <laughs> I, I did not have my sword, no. Oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. So we, we talked earlier about your hog encounter uh-huh. and, and the um, resulting toe injury. So have mm-hmm. you gotten to try out your correct toes yet? I was able to wear them a couple of days prior to prior prior to the incident. Okay. The hog. And uh, and then after that, I I there was like a week and a half that I couldn't even put them on there. Right. And, and, I, and I was just keeping my toes taped so that way I could keep going. And so I actually have them on right now. Um. I, I and now, I, I'm you use the large guys. as well, right? Yes, I use. I needed the large too. Now I'm using them incorrectly, mm-hmm. and and I hate to say that. But I'm not wearing them inside shoes. And the reason why is I'm an extremely claustrophobic person. And I think that that kind of makes me have the inability to have something in between my toes. <laughs> like, like, when a, like, like when a sock like works up at the end of your, of your shoe and works in between your toes, I have to get that shoe off immediately and I have to get that fixed. I mean, I cannot stand – I mean, people who wear, who wear the, the toe socks and people who wear the toe shoes – I don't see how they can do it because I, I can't I can't do it. I mean, it's it's almost like claustrophobia to have something in between my toes. Now, if I'm walking around the house and just like right now, barefoot and hanging out, then I'll slip them on. And and so, you know, I can I can deal with that, but I cannot do it inside I, my shoes. I don't think I, mean, they, I guess if I guess if I had some sort of medical reason that I had to force myself to to use these to correct a problem. Yeah, I would put up with it and I would deal with it. But since I'm just kind of just playing around with them and I've already got a real good toe splay anyway, Mm -hmm. then I just wear them around the house uh, just with my shoes off. So I I think it'll be interesting to have the two different comparisons as as a data point that, you know, okay, this is someone who's been wearing them a lot Mm -hmm. compared to someone who just wore wore them 
part of the time. So. Now, did you have to modify yours at all? Although, uh, if you're no. not wearing them shoes and you don't, have you tried them with shoes? No, I haven't because I just at least yeah. at least try them with shoes because I want to know if you have to modify yours. I had okay. to I had to cut the pinky toe spacer off of mine, okay. which is one of the procedures they say you might have to do on their website. It um, first they say cut it like half of it off, mm-hmm. and then the full one. It was the mediums were not going to fit. I didn't even open them up. I opened the large, figuring that's what I was going to need um, because it it doesn't it only they only sort of go by shoe size. They're more by diameter of your toes because yeah. they got to fit in the little things. So anyways, the large fit fine there, but they were splaying my toes too wide. I couldn't get my feet even in ultras. Okay. That's how wide it was splaying my toes. So I had to cut the pinky spacer off. And I don't, I haven't really had any issues with toes overlapping or anything anyways. But um, I followed the directions and it says, you know, like the first day wear them for a half hour and then the next day an hour. Um, so I did things correctly for the first two days and then I'm impatient. So day three, I threw them on, went for my morning run, warm to work. They were driving me crazy by the end of the day. <laughs> um, should have had some more break in time. But now we're on week three. Um, I wear them right when I get up in the morning. I put them on to go for my run, take them off the shower, obviously. Put them back on, wear them all day at work. I don't even notice them. Still have them on now. I, I honestly don't notice them. I don't use toe socks, so they are on my bare toes and then just the normal sock over them and mm-hmm. then into my shoe. I can't wear them with a lot of my shoes, but I have been trying to only wear my toe box zero drop shoes anyways. So my Carson's or my Ultra's about the only two shoes I have that my feet will fit in with them on. So yeah, I, um, I don't know if it's been a combination of the correct toes and zero drop shoes or just one or the other, but one of the biggest things I've noticed is after a run, especially a long run, I don't need to stretch anything. You know, I will get done with my run and I'm tired, you know, I mean, I'm ready to sit down, but we're usually, you know, you get, you know, your long run, you come back and you do the, you know, the calf stretch against the wall and all that stuff. Don't Mm -hmm. need it. I'm done. I'm just like, okay, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm going to go get a drink and sit down now. I, I have no, no tightness anywhere. So I don't know if it's a combination of the two, just one or the other. Not sure about that. So I guess I'll have to stop using one and see if it comes back. <laughs> or just put one on one foot. One on one. That There you go. Now that's some Ozark technology there. That, there it is. That's a scientific thing. <laughs> Yo, let's halves it up. <laughs> let's halvesy these. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, interested to to see um, what they do. I, I It's going to be hard to, honestly, it's going to be hard to know if the correct toes are doing much because... Like I said, I really didn't have a big issue with my toes overlapping. And even before we had them, I had mentioned that I did notice my foot shape changing a little just by using wide toe box shoes. So I've been taking a picture every day when I wake up thinking I'm going to do one of those time morph things. Although my feet are so ugly, I, it may never see the light of day. <laughs> so I, I just... To throw in a couple pictures where you painted your toenails. That's and then a good it'll idea. go through and it'll show them painted. Dang and right. Well, I always use my left foot because my right foot's got a big black toenail on it from breaking that toe a few years ago. Actually, right before, because it is, it, we, we kind of, we have an anniversary too, don't we? Let's see. What's that one? Go, go St. Louis. Oh, that's just right. Yeah. There. Yeah. That was both our first marathon. What? Two, mm-hmm. two years ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Dang. Seems like forever. Yeah, I was thinking it was three, but shoot. Man, we got no business having a running podcast. I don't know. Shut down the mics. Let's go. See y'all later, everybody. (laughs) We should just end it right there. We should just end it right there. (laughs) Maybe we will if the rest of this is boring. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, two year anniversary. Wow. Yeah, and I broke my right big toe, uh, I think about a month and a half out from the, the. St. Louis Marathon. So, and it's still to this day, the, the whole toenail came off and it mm-hmm. grew back black. <sighs> That's strange. So, I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, I don't, I, I do yoga and everyone's in bare feet except for me. You know, <laughs> and my left foot's, fi- I mean, I got ugly feet anyways, but my left foot's fine. And I was like, why are you always in socks? And I'm like, I'm doing you all a favor. <laughs> 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 that and, you know, our, our episode with, with Mr. Carson just came out. Love the shoes, but I want to know if you're having this issue too. 
Not that any running shoes smell particularly great. Mm-hmm. Those Carsons hold a funk. At least mine do. It it, it does have a, a a different type of fabric on it. They it holds an old dog breath funk to them. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't, I'm not sure it's just the fabric the way it is, but, uh, you know, all my other shoes, I'm not saying they smell pretty, but Mm -hmm. you got to get them pretty close to your nose before you notice it. But my Carson's, I can, yeah, just get them near me and (laughs) you you can smell them. So (laughs) that's been, that's been the one down, down thing about them is they hold a funk. I don't, I don't think I've, uh. Uh, I don't think I've really noticed that, but I guess it's about time to get a video put together on uh, yeah. on Carson. Hey, yell up to your wife. Tell her to go smell your Carson's. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what you think. <laughs> smell these, baby. <laughs> That's all man right there. <laughs> Is it wet dog? <laughs> Swamp gas? <laughs> or low tide? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, boy. This podcast is going nowhere, is it? (laughs) I know. People are hitting unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Go away. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, we need to get uh, videos on the Carsons. Um, And I'm trying to think if there's anything. I haven't bought anything else new, and I pretty soon we're probably going to have to get something new to test. All right. Well, if, if anyone out there has any recommendations of something, that they would like for us to test. And it needs to be something that's not super popular or everyone's got one. It needs to be some some sort of company that flies under the radar, like a Carson that uh, you know we can bring to the light if they've got something really cool. We'd love to take your recommendations. So you could either call the voicemail or you can get us on Facebook or, or any other smoke signal us and uh, let us know about it, and we'll check that product out. Yes, send one hog to Andy if it's footwear, or send two hogs to Andy <laughs> if it's running apparel. <laughs> oh. I think from now on, our voicemail, we're going to call it the hog line. That's about all I have for right now, Brother Andy, unless you have anything else. Nothing else. Well, I think we're just going to go ahead and wrap this up. All right, we'd like to encourage everyone to call our voicemail line. That's area code 417-319-1060. And be sure to join our Facebook social group. That's where all the fun and exciting excitement happens. As well, you can find us on Instagram at Heartland Runner Podcast. I, uh, I try to throw something up every day. I don't always get it every day, but most days I do. You got anything to add, Brother Andy? I think I'm done. All right. We want to thank everyone for sticking us in your ears. And until next time, I'm Stephen. And I'm Andy. And we'll talk to you later.